Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Emma, and we are playing Dragon Age Inquisition. So last time we picked up our new friends, Varric, who is a familiar face, and Solus. All right, so let's refill our supply cache and go figure out how everybody's been doing. Ah, here they come. You made it. Chancellor Roderick, this is... I know who she is. As Grand Chancellor of the Chantry, I hereby order you to take this criminal to Valroyo to face execution. Order me? You are a glorified clerk, a bureaucrat. And you are a thug, but a thug who supposedly serves the Chantry. We serve the most holy, Chancellor. As you well know. Justinia is dead! We must elect a replacement and obey her orders on the matter. Isn't closing the breach the more pressing issue? You brought this on us in the first place! Call a retreat, Seeker. Our position here is hopeless. We can stop this before it's too late. How? You won't survive long enough to reach the temple, even with all your soldiers. We must get to the temple. It's the quickest route. But not the safest. Our forces can charge as a distraction while we go through the mountains. We lost contact with an entire squad on that path. It's too risky. Listen to me. Abandon this now, before more lives are lost. How do you think we should proceed? Now you're asking me what I think. You have the mark. And you are the one we must keep alive. Since we cannot agree on our own. Yeah, I, I'm not a proponent of just throwing human lives at things to service distraction. So we're going to go with people. So it says scouts may be lost. Scouts in the past may be lost. And this says fast but indirect. I, I don't like using people as distractions. Not when it's like nice certain death. I say we charge. I won't survive long enough for your trial. Whatever happens, happens now. Liliana, bring everyone left in the valley. Everyone. On your head be the consequences, Seeker. I don't remember her blush being so very pink, but it is what it is. Also, these loading screens, though. I've noticed it's been way worse, the load times, on PC than on console, and I'm not sure why. I mean, my PC's not shit. <laughs> All right. All right, friends, let's do this. Oh, guy, be careful. What is that? Oh? Oh, that's kind of helpful if we needed shit. Oh God, they're fighting, let's go help. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There. I love that ability. No, you get back here. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on. 
There are quite a bit. Actually, let's disrupt. So this is really a handy ability. When there's just a few guys left, you can just stun them like that. All right. We're in How another many one? rifts are there? Oh no, it's we just doing a part two. We have to get past. Quickly then. Oh no, I hate these guys. Yeah. Oh. Sealed, as before. You are becoming quite proficient at this. Let's hope it works on the big one. Lady Cassandra, you managed to close the rift. Well done. Do not congratulate me, Commander. This is the prisoners doing. Is it? I hope they're right about you. We've lost a lot of people getting you here. You're welcome, Cullen. It's not good to see you again. I can't promise anything, but I'll try my best. And that's all we can ask. The way to the temple should be clear. Liliana will try to meet you there. Then we'd best move quickly. Give us time, Commander. Make her watch over you for all our sex. You're welcome. Oh, yikes. <laughs> she just fucking jumps off that edge. The Velocine was such a good idea. It's so pretty. The color specifically. I'll have to worry about gear later. I did want to like, I never take my time and like look at these things. Like this person's eyes are still aflame. We had havoc that was wrecked in such a short period of time. Seconds, really. It's just the crazy. The temple of sacred ashes. What's left of it? That is where you walked out of the Fade, and our soldiers found you. They say a woman was in the rift behind you. No one knows who she was. How many people died? This kind of like... That's what I would imagine the Fade to look like. Oh, I bet the veil's really thin here now. men take up positions around the temple. This is your chance to end this. Are you ready? I'll try, but I don't know if I can reach that much less close it. No. This rift was the first, and it is the key. Seal it, and perhaps we seal the breach. Then let's find a way down, and be careful. All right, let's find that way down. Now is the hour of our victory. Bring forth the sacrifice. What are we hearing? At a guess, the person who created the breach. Ah. Uh. It's not great to see you either, Red Lyrium. Can I look at it yet? You know this stuff is Red Lyrium Seeker. I see it, Varric. But what's it doing here? Magic could have drawn on Lyrium beneath the temple, 
corrupted it. <laughs> it's evil. Whatever you do, don't touch it. You know, Varric. Keep the sacrifice still. Someone help me! That is divine Justinia's voice. I'm trying to go slow enough to where all the dialogue gets to go. I think we're good, maybe? called out to you, but... What's going on here? Run where you can! Run them! We have an intruder. Slay the elf. There. Who attacked? And the divine is she? Was this vision true? What are we seeing? I don't remember. Echoes of what happened here. The fate bleeds into this place. This rift is not sealed, but it is closed, albeit temporarily. I believe that with the mark, the rift can be opened, and then sealed properly and safely. However, opening the rift will likely attract attention from the other side. That means demons! Stand ready! I like how Cassandra translates for the masses. Alright guys, we got this. Coming out of stealth. This isn't working. Quickly! Disrupt the rift! Come on. There we go. Now can we? Yes. Now. Yes. Good job. Good job. I'm watching my abilities like a hot. Trying to get it. Like, where are you firing, sweetheart? One more, one more. His whole bottom is chilly. I presume the mechanic is going to be disrupt again when he gets his armor back. All the demons. Yeah. Yes. Good, we're already halfway there. But I'm trying to stay near enough to my friends so when Solus barriers me, we're all protected. Because she has aggro like a great tank. Oh, buddy. Let's not point that over here. I can never tell if we're shit, shit, shit. I'm gonna lose aggro first. 
first? Come on, let me. Why won't it let me do the rift? <laughs> Please let me disrupt the rift. Okay, good. She took a potion. I was worried about cast. I don't think you can heal in this game, right? Not an increase. As a mage, I should specify that. Come on, so close. Perfect. Now, seal the ring. Sorry. Do it. Have to turn those off. Actually, you probably can't see those achievements because my face is over them for the most part. Cool. Now it's time for more epically long load screens. This game still plays as smoothly as I remember. It's still crazy to think that it's been five years since it's come out. It still looks pretty nice, too. It's probably... Yeah, it's probably still kind of up to standards. It's probably not going to be, like, up to standards when, like, Cyberpunk 2077 comes out. I think the graphics on that are real nice. And I haven't played The Witcher, so I can't speak for 3 or anything like that. Because I've heard the graphics are really nice on that. That'll probably be the series that we play after Inquisition is finished. Because then I'll have to move on. And I haven't played Witcher, and I really want to. I doubt we'll start with one. I'll probably put something together that, like, TLDRs the lore, maybe. So I'm up to speed. Because um, I don't want to go into two without the lore of one. That would be doing the game a disservice. Because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of... There's a lot of lore that draws upon the first game. Characters. And I don't want to miss out on that kind of stuff. I didn't know you were awake. I swear. You're totally fine, sweetheart. Why are you why are you afraid? Don't worry about it. I only I beg your forgiveness and your blessing. Honey. I am but a humble servant. You are back in Haven, my lady. They say you saved us. The breach stopped growing, just like the mark on your hand. It's all anyone has talked about for the last three days. Then the danger is over. The breach is still in the sky, but that's what they say. I'm certain Lady Cassandra would want to know you've wakened. She said, at once. And where is she? In the Chantry, with the Lord Chancellor. At once, she said. Oh, that exchange kind of kills me. I wish we could be kinder and a little bit more empathetic being elves ourselves. Even though we are Dalish. Ooh, Dawn Lotus. Special shipments? Is this like DLC stuff? I guess. Alright. Hmm. Patient observations. Vain hope. Someone better at this than me takes over before the survivor expires. Notes in case. Dang. 
Day one. Clammy. Shallow breathing. Pulse over fast. Not responsive. Pupils dilated. Mage says her scarring mark is thrumming with unknown magic. Wish we could station a Templar in here just in case. Rude. No. No Templars. Oh, after having read, like, the Masked Empire and dealing with all the, like, anti-elf sentiment, like, ugh, it's hard for me to watch that poor servant run away. Like, she's been kicked several times for not moving fast enough, not saying yes, ma'am, fast enough. Kills me. I, like, see this giant procession waiting for me and I just go into somebody's house to explore. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll keep to the... That's her. Whoops. That's the Herald of Andraste. Not they really, said but... When she came out of the Fade, Andraste herself was watching all her. I need you to walk, sweetheart. We'll jog. Kolo, she does not want to walk. That's her. She stopped the breach from getting any bigger. I heard she was supposed to close in entirely. I tried. <laughs> I tried. It's really hard to RP walk with this controller. Chancellor Roderick says that the Chantry wants nothing to do with us. That isn't Chancellor Roderick's decision, sister. I know Haven was... Isn't that the point of religions like this? There we go. Now, I know Haven was in some way mentioned previously in lore. I don't remember how. Okay, so we've got things to look at. A chant for the departed. The light shall lead her safely through the paths of this world and into the next. Ooh. Uh, for she who trusts in the maker, fire is her water. As the moth sees light and goes towards the flame, she should see fire and go towards light. The veil holds no uncertainty for her, and she will know no fear of death, nor the make for the maker shall be her beacon and her short sword. God damn it. And her shield, her foundation, and her sword. Ooh, Transfigurations class. I didn't know we were in Hogwarts. Often sung by mourners as they light candles. There was another one. But now I want to look around. Ooh, I s oh, it's just sort of- No, it was a thing! Good for me. The Fade. The study of the Fade is as old as humankind. For so long as men have dreamed, we have walked its twisting paths, sometimes catching a glimpse of the city at its heart. Always as close as our own thoughts, but impossibly separated from our world. Da Vinci Imperium once spent vast fortunes of gold, Larian, and human slaves in an effort to map the terrain of the Fade, an ultimately futile endeavor, because it reflects our world. Although portions of it belong to powerful spirits, all of the Fade is in constant flux. The Imperium succeeded in finding the disparate and ever-shifting realms of, of a dozen demon lords, as well as cataloging a few hundred types of spirits, before they were forced to abandon the project. The relationship of dreamers to the Fade is complex. Even when entering the Fade through the use of Lyrium, mortals are not able to control or affect it. The spirits who dwell there, however, can, and as the Chantry teaches us, the great flaw of the spirits is that they have neither imagination nor ambition. I mean, but sometimes people do, or lack those things. It's not inherently flawed. Rude. We're doing that thing in Pocahontas where people are judging others because they're not like them. They create what they see through their sleeping visitors, building elaborate copies of our cities, people, and events, which, like the reflections in a mirror, ultimately lack context or life of their own. Even the most powerful demons merely plagiarize the worst thoughts and fears of mortals, and build their realms with no other ambition than to taste life. From Tranquility and the Role of the Fade in Human Culture, by First Enchanter Josephus. The Condemnation, though. Okay, there was something else. I thought I saw something over here. Come 
There was. Um, I am definitely gonna squash this Herald of Andraste stuff. That's rude. I'm clearly not Andrastian. I am Dalish. I have my own gods, so don't be rude. Have you got completely mad? She should be taken to Valroyo immediately. To be tried by whomever becomes divine. I do not believe she is guilty. The elf failed, Seeker. The breach is still in the sky. For all you know, she intended it this way. I do not believe that. That is not for you to decide. Your duty is to serve the Chantry. My duty is to serve the principles on which the Chantry was founded, Chancellor. As is yours. I think that's definitely a better way of putting it, because it's not like blindly follow Chantry bullshit. That's... Oof. Don't blindly follow anything. That's shitty. Okay. Everyone's favorite time. Who do we have that's new? Oh god, is it Roderick? Fuck me. It is! But this is good. It's good to know about him. There are some who claim men have no place in the Chantry. Ah, because it is matriarchal. Beyond the lowest rank of scholarly brothers and those who take their place amongst the Templars. It's very drow of them. It is not true. This is an organization spanning seven nations, from the smallest village chantry to the Grand Cathedral in Val Royal. It takes more than sermons to keep it alive. There is an invisible army at work ensuring meals delivered, repairs are made, and faithful attended to, and much of it done by chantry brothers like myself. They really not let dudes, like, be priests or whatever? Have I just, like, never noticed? The position of High Chancellor places a man beside the Most Holy. I control who is permitted audience, handle her correspondence, deliver her word to Thetis, serve as her advisor on matters which may be mundane but cannot be disregarded. If I have influence, let it be said it is something I use sparingly, if at all. This is a task to which I devote myself with solemnity. I and my fellows bear burdens so that others are free to guide the spirits of Thetis unencumbered. That sounds like only women are allowed to be priestesses or nuns or whatever they like to call their administers of faith. I didn't know that. See, now I'm super glad we read that. Also, I didn't know that I, Chancellor, was such a a lofty position in its way. He's kind of like her secretary, yeah? That's really cool. Or maybe her steward. Maybe steward is more appropriate. Okay, Dragonthorn. The wood of the Dragonthorn tree is prized for its strength and has been used to craft bows of remarkable quality, but the leaves are equally valuable. Alchemists have known for centuries that an extract of Dragonthorn leaves will enhance and stabilize other more volatile magical components. Or compounds. Which is actually says. <laughs> Demons? Oh no. Templars? Foot soldier. So what is... See how it has two... Come on now. Two blips at the top? How do I go to the other blip? Oh, is it a show image? Cool. But I there are literally two blips. And I can't navigate between them. Weird. Foot soldier. I have faced in Teven Dulis, Ferelden Ash Warriors, and Fog Warrior Skirmishers. Ah, like the ones that Fenris was talking about. When I strip away the titles and tricks, they are simply men who want to see their enemies dead, but need a hand free to manage it. Duelists favor a thinner target over the offensive strength of a main gauche. Ash warriors need a hand to guide their mabari and a lighter weapon to take advantage of the openings their dogs leave. While fog warriors rely on stealth and speed too much to use a heavy shield. When engaging with such an opponent, respect his speed. His hands and feet will move a great deal. Ignore them. Watch his hips and shoulders instead. First deny what advantage he has in his allies or environment, unless you have trained equally in such matters. Once you control his weapon, overwhelm him. He has no shield, and you need not fear a second blade. If forced to fight in such a manner, you must decide whether you will fight as a duelist, one-handed, or as a chevalier. If the former, drop your back leg away to tighten your center target, as you have no shield to cover your body or second weapon to bring into range. Focus on a quick attack and give ground freely when you cannot find an advantage. If the latter, rely on your vambrace and gauntlet as a shield, and try to wrench your opponent's weapon away. My left arm bears the scars of such efforts, but my opponents bear worse. 
Better still, do not lose your shield at all, but battles are not a place of perfection. An excerpt from A Meditation Upon the Use of Blades by Swordmaster ooh, Massage de Jean Mine. Sorry for that horrible French rendition. Required reading at the Académie des Chevaliers. That was better. Oh, we still have more creatures? How many do we have? Okay. Pride Demon. The most powerful demons yet encountered are the Pride Demons. Perhaps because they, among all their kind, most resemble men. As clever and manipulative as the Desire Demon. See what it was? Two notches? That's killing me. I don't know why. Um, as clever and manipulative as the Desire Demon, with a penchant for cruel irony that is almost human. While the demons of desire are largely engaged in the bribery of mortals, pride will use mortals' own best nature against them. Clever men outwit themselves. Strong men crush themselves. Humble men forget themselves. Jealous men fear themselves. They turn corruption and ruin into an art. From Beyond the Veil, Spirits and Demons by Enchanter Midromel. Midro Mirdromel. Mirdromel. That sounds elven. And therefore lovely. Okay. Red Lyrium. To answer your question, my lord, yes, I have indeed heard of this Red Lyrium of which you speak. A single piece of it surfaced in the eastern kingdom of Kirkwall, and its influence alone was nearly enough to cause the city's destruction. As near as we can determine, it is regular Lyrium that has been somehow corrupted. Those who have touched Red Lyrium, or even come near it, report that it sings to them like whispers in the mind that slowly drive them mad. We do not know, however, what might stem from extended contact with Red Lyrium. Madness, surely. But would there be a physical corruption as well? What would happen if a mage or Templar used Red Lyrium as they used regular Lyrium? Far more disturbing is the fact that Lyrium could be corrupted at all. Treat any Red Lyrium you encounter as if it were poison. Do not go near it, do not attempt to destroy it, and most importantly, do not attempt to use it. From a partially burned letter by an unknown writer, affixed with the Grey Warden seal. I figured doing these at the end might make it easier for everybody to digest them. Okay, so do we do the fade, I think? Yeah. Temple of Sacred Ashes rediscovered. According to legend, the sacred ashes of Andraste were carried out of the Imperium by Havard, disciple of Our Lady. Wounded by Tevinter's soldiers when he tried to stop Andraste's capture, Havard was too late Yeah, in coming to Minrathis to stop the execution. All he found was her ashes left out in the elements. As soon as Havard touched them, Mandrasi appeared in a vision. Rise, she said, Aegis of the Faith. The Maker shall never forget you, so long as I remember. The Aegis of the Faith, so named by our prophet to herself, stood at her word and found his wounds healed, and his spirit renewed. He gathered the ashes of Andraste and returned to the lands of the Amari tribes, which are now Ferelden. It's said that Andraste's song led him to a holy site, where Havard and his followers built a temple to house her remains. There the legend ends. For centuries, men searched for the Temple of Sacred Ashes, finding only rumors and tall tales. Chantry scholars concluded that there was no temple. There were no sacred ashes. It was all a myth, allegory intended to inspire and feed the fire of faith. Then the hero of Ferelden came, seeking to cure a dying Arl with the miraculous powers of the ashes. The hero, with the help of renowned scholar brother Ferdinand Genetivi, ah yes, traced the steps of the ancients and came to a remote ruin, high in the Frostback Mountains. There the urn of sacred ashes waited, as the legend said it would. After the triumph of the righteous over the fifth blight, the temple's discovery was shared with the world. Much to our dismay, however, by the time our soldiers arrived at the temple, the urn had disappeared. To this day we do not know who took them or why. All that is certain is that it was the Maker's will. The hero of Ferelden did not share the discovery with the world. <gasps> oh good, is it reflecting the choices we made? Whose research made it possible, Brother Genitivi, had disappeared without a trace. Truth, however, will always hold out. Did he take them? I don't remember. Truth, however, will always out. And rumors circulate about the cause of Earl Eamon Garen's miraculous recovery. Okay. Agents of the Chantry investigated claims about the urn of sacred ashes and were eventually led, as the hero had been led, to the temple. By the time our soldiers reached it, however, the urn was nowhere to be found. Didn't we just read that? Basically. Though the ashes were gone, the temple itself stood, and it has since become a source of hope for the faithful. If the Grand Cathedral is the beating heart of our chantry, then the Temple of Sacred Ashes is her soul. 
Here we honor the Chantry's past, even as we forge bravely into our future. From a lecture delivered by Chantry scholar Mother Clothild. Ooh, that's awful. At the University of Orlais, a 938 dragon. Unamas. Sorry, that one was so long. This one's not as bad. Haven, I would like to speak to you of Haven, the village in the Frostbacks, close to the Temple of the Sacred Ashes. We are all aware of its past. It was home to the disciples of Andraste, as they called themselves. Descended from the people who built the temple itself, they had strayed, over years of isolation, from their once noble roots to become dragon worshippers. After the hero of Ferelden discovered the Temple of Sacred Ashes, which the disciples guarded jealously, what remained of the cult moved on, and Haven was abandoned to the ice and snow. I think that's where that really creepy kid was, right? It's kind of creepy. I bet you're a clever boy. What do you know about Haven? Haven is Haven. But I have a secret. Do you want to see? <laughs> yes, show me. The boy pulls out something from his pocket and shows it to you. A finger bone. Bleached white by the sun and polished through constant handling. This kid's so creepy! In Origins. I passed through Haven on my pilgrimage to see the Temple of Sacred Ashes. There was a storm, and I took shelter in the Hall of Haven's Chantry. Though they were dusty from neglect, the walls of that lonely place were strong and shielded me from the biting winds. Peace came upon me, and my eyes were open to Haven's incredible beauty. It could not be overcome by the pain and the horror of the past. It could not be masked by decay and disguise. It would not be forgotten. Haven is precious to our lay, to the Chantry, and to the Sunburst Throne for its historical and religious significance. It is my will that Haven be restored, rededicated to the service of Andraste, and preserved for the ages. Let it be a sanctuary for the pilgrims who seek out the Temple of Sacred Ashes. May they rest here beneath the cold, bright skies. May the glory of the Maker be revealed to them as they gaze upon the great peaks that are the work of his hand. Now and forevermore, let this be a haven for the faithful. From a speech by Divine Justinia V and 935 Dragon. That's awesome. Hopefully I read that as eloquently as she would have delivered a speech. Okay, guys. Now that we have all our codex entries out of the way and we're caught up, I'm going to end it here. Next time we get to figure out what we're going to do now that the breach remains in the sky. I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.